The second generation of DirectX 11 cards from AMD was released at the end of January 2012 and it featured initially only the high-end HD7950 and HD7970 GPUs. The new architecture, GCN, promised to deliver three times the performance and lower power consumption. It is worth noting that some of these gains come from reducing the lithography used from 40 nanometers to 28. This caught the attention of Microsoft, who decided to put a GCN-based chip in their own Xbox One consoles. The HD7000 series was also the first generation of cards from AMD to feature a media encoding engine, a feature that remained on almost all video cards except the very cheapest ones. Well, one more recent case comes to mind and is definitely not that cheap. Anyway, the mid-range cards from the new GCN architecture were launched on February 15th and consisted of the lower tier HD7750 and the 30% more powerful HD7770. Unlike the HD5000 series, the HD7000 series enjoys Vulkan support and game-ready drivers were released for it up until mid-2021, when it was put on legacy driver support. According to Tech Power Up, the name of the GPU is Cape Verde and it was developed using the GCN 1.0 architecture. With 640 shader cores, 40 TMUs and 16 ROPs, the GPU is paired with 1GB of GDDR5 memory via a 128-bit bus. Running the GPU at 1000MHz and the memory at 1125MHz, the HD7770 is expected to have a maximum power consumption of 80 watts. As cooling solution, Asus chose to use the same aluminium flower and one fan on its HD7770-1 GD5. However, unlike the R5770-BMD1G from MSI, temperatures are much better. Warframe stayed at 72C, a 50 degrees delta over ambient, and Heaven didn't run higher than 63C, for a delta over ambient of 40 degrees. Apex Legends at 1080p low settings managed to reach an average of 57 FPS, with 1% lows around 39 FPS. While playable, dropping the resolution to 720p will provide averages of 65 FPS and 49 FPS 1% lows, more adequate for this multiplayer title. Warzone should be played at 720p low settings. The averages reached 44 FPS in the training, with 1% lows at 33 FPS. Good enough to get a taste of the game, but unfortunately more is needed in the actual game. Hyperscape manages to boot into the 3D game lobby. A change in settings made the game fail at following boot-up attempts, unfortunately. And with the recent announcement of terminating development for it, any bug fixes seem very unlikely. For Battlefield 5, the single player can be played at 720p low settings, with averages ranging between 30s to high 50s and even 70s in air combat, and 1% lows hovering between 11 and even 49 FPS. The average in the multiplayer training map was around 54 FPS, with 1% lows of 30 FPS. Like with Warzone, but maybe even more so, this is enough to get your feet wet with the multiplayer experience. Control behaves significantly better than what we experienced with the 5770 review. With averages ranging in the 40s, the game is playable at 720p low settings. The fact that AMD supported GPUs from the GCN architecture with game-ready drivers up until 2021 is definitely a factor to be considered here. Rainbow Six Siege is also playable. 
1080p low settings and 100% render scale yielded an average of 50 fps in the built-in benchmark. The 1% figures were close to 40 fps. At 720p, the values improved to 94 fps average and 64 fps 1% lows. For casual multiplayer, 1080p with 50% render scale is a good choice. A good alternative would be to use one of the available FSR tools to play it at 1080p with FSR set to quality. Alien Isolation reached an average of 51 FPS at 1080p ultra settings. Nothing surprising here, this corridor game is quite forgiving on hardware requirements. Settings can be dropped for higher FPS, but it is not really needed. At ultra settings, the 1% average of 31 FPS makes the gameplay quite smooth. All right. CSGO is a more weird game to test. Recording via MSI Afterburn will cause a performance penalty between 16 to 20 FPS. Even with that penalty though, the HD7770 reached an average of 107 FPS in EA dust, with 1% low values of 54 FPS. Dota 2 is another game that was tested at 1080p low settings, with averages hovering around the high 80s and 1% lows at 42 FPS, the game can be played comfortably. Fortnite will run well at 1080p in performance mode. With the rendering distance set to far, it will deliver 77 FPS on average. The low 1% and 0.1% values of 41 FPS do indicate some micro stuttering, but it is really nothing that will detract from the game experience. Rocket League will also run acceptable at 1080p with lower settings, providing averages in the 80s with 1% lows at 30 FPS. Splitgate runs at 73 FPS on average, at 1080p low settings. The 1% lows, almost reaching 40, will provide a good experience. A high refresh rate experience can be obtained at 720p, with averages at almost 120 FPS and 1% lows at 61. The amateurs of FSR can use their favorite FSR tool to play at 1080p with FSR set to quality. Valorant is not a problem for the 7770 at 1080p low settings. With averages ranging between 143 and 189 FPS and 1% lows between 89 and 118, the gameplay is solid and losing a match will not be due to the GPU and the frame rate. Genshin Impact at 1080p low settings will provide an average of 57 FPS at a render scale of 1. The 1% lows stay comfortably at 42 FPS. Like the 5770, the HD 7770 is adequate to run this single player title. Paladins is a high refresh experience at 1080p high settings with 102 FPS average. The 1% lows of 52 FPS provide a good gaming experience. Realm Royale provides an average of 89 FPS at 1080p with a mix of settings, most of them on high. The game experience is good and the 1% lows is in the high 40s. Rogue Company at 1080p low settings reached an average of 85 FPS. The 1% lows of 43 FPS are good enough for a nice gaming experience. World of Tanks Blitz also reached its 60 FPS cap at 1080p high settings and standard definition textures. And although the name implies speed, this game has a slow enough pace to the point where 60 FPS is plenty. The 1% and 0.1% lows were also good, 
the game played quite smoothly. Warframe hits an average of 81 FPS at 1080p low settings. The 1% low value is also good enough for the single player title, 50 FPS. The difference in FPS compared to the 5770 comes from the levels being played being different. Used GPUs will always be good as a stopgap solution until you get the money for the GPU that you really want, but that is as long as the market is fairly stable. And once the GPU of your dreams comes knocking at your door, you now have the option to resell the old GPU to recover most if not all of your initial investment, again, as long as the market is stable enough. APUs are touted as a better solution than using an old GPU, however, the iGPU does not come for free. You either pay for it in performance of the CPU or in play money as is in the case of Intel. In case of AMD, the iGPUs in their G series of Ryzen APUs are quite good. But without a non-G non-X equivalent CPU, it is more difficult to assess the cost of their iGPU in either price or performance. In the case of Intel, however, the difference is exactly 25 USD for their Core i5 line of CPUs. And up until Alder Lake, for 25 USD, the odds of buying an old discrete GPU that beats the i5 iGPU are quite good. Do I need to mention that you can even increase that budget if you plan to resell the old GPU? As a stopgap card, the HD 7770 will allow you to play a good bunch of games, including some of the more recent ones. This is mostly due to the extended driver support that the GCN architecture enjoyed, and it being used in the Xbox One consoles was definitely a factor for that. This makes it quite good until you get a better card, and if that brand new card happens to not have a media encoder, you may choose to keep the HD 7770 in a separate slot for its media encoding capabilities. I was pleasantly surprised by how the 7770 managed to perform. I bought mine because I was trying to figure out what was the slowest card that can still run Fortnite at an acceptable FPS in performance mode. And while I was on the lookout for a R7 250, I stumbled on an ad where the seller had an HD 7770. Since the faster R7 250X was a rebranding of the 7770, I decided to let go of the Oland based R7 250 non-X and go for the Cape Verde 7770. 